Those of us who belong to Jesus, God's children, have a kind of a built-in divine radar. The Spirit of God lives within us, and He guides us along through life. And when we cooperate with that, things go really well. There's a great story towards the end of the book of 1 Samuel in the Old Testament. And David, who eventually will become a famous king, was running for his life. The king, Saul, had made some bad blunders, and God told him he was going to take the kingdom away from him. Meanwhile, David was becoming very popular, a warrior. He killed the giant Goliath. And Saul, instead of admitting his problem and dealing with it, he decided to try to kill David to preserve his own kingdom. And so he's out with his army hunting him, wanting to kill him. And David is running. He's hiding. He's in the Judean desert, and you look at pictures of that place, and I don't know how they navigated it, much less survived, but that's where David was, and that's where Saul was looking for him. And David and his men were in the back, the, the way back inside of a cave. And Saul came into that area, and he went into that cave, apparently to uh, refresh himself, and he took a nap. And David's men realized Saul was there, and David could kill him and have the kingdom. And they encouraged David to do that. And David says, no, I won't do that. That's God's job to take care of Saul. He cut a little piece off of his robe so he could show Saul that he had saved his life. And eventually Saul left and David announced to him what he had done. And Saul was humiliated and he left him alone for a period of time. David understood that, well, it's kind of like the quotation that's credited <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, to Jim Elliott, the, moder the uh, martyred missionary in Ecuador back in the 1950s. He said, God gives his best to those who leave the choice to him. And David understood that. And so he waited, and eventually God took care of Saul, Saul moved him out of the area, and David became king. That's a great illustration. A lot of years ago, I read a story that kind of illustrates this. A father and a son went into a grocery store out in a country community. And as they walked inside the door, this young boy saw these absolutely beautiful cherries. And he just fixed his eyes on them. And obviously, the store owner noticed that. And so he went over to the boy and he said, son, help yourself to the cherries. The boy never moved. And so the store manager looked at him a little strange, and he said, Really, I'm serious. It won't cost you anything. Help yourself to the cherries. And he still didn't do anything. And perhaps almost in frustration, the store owner scooped up a great big handful of those cherries. His hand was a lot bigger than that boy's. And put them in to the boy's hand and said, Here, enjoy them. So not long after that, the boy and his father left the store. And dad asked the young man, he said, why were you so hesitant? That man wanted to give you those cherries. Why didn't you take them? And the boy said, hey, dad, did you notice how big that man's hand was? He said, I got twice as many cherries by waiting for him to give the cherries to me out of his hand. Great illustration, don't you think? God gives his best to those who leave the choice to him. And if we run ahead of him in those choices, we'll probably miss out on what he really wanted to give us, like David would have if he'd have gone ahead and killed Saul. Uh, if we lag behind, we can miss the blessing as well. My tendency is to run ahead. And uh, I believe that God today wants to remind us that he is giving us choices and he doesn't force us to follow them. But when we let him be our divine radar and we let him guide our life, then the choices are always right, they're always good, and we have a joyful life and he's honored. 
You know, I hope whatever you're going through today in life, I hope that these few thoughts might be meaningful to you. And uh, until we get to talk again, God bless you. Thanks for listening.